I am Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Carlos Tepang, founder and CEO of Zero Interest DAO. Carlos, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me, Ashton. And uh, let me uh, tell you about myself. Uh, I've been in the cryptocurrency business since uh, 2011. That's the time I wrote my first blog on uh, Bitcoin. I was very skeptical then, but now, of course, I'm a big uh, believer. Uh, I invested in Bitcoin in 2013 and then in uh, Ethereum in uh, 2015. So uh, I'm using my, uh, my gains to uh, do a couple of startups, actually. Um, I am also the founder and CEO of Rockstable, which is a remittance company. And uh, this other one is called uh, Zero Percenter. Well, which is doing the zero interest project. That's great. Great backstory. And yeah, I would love to dive into the world of DeFi, um, you know, loans and, and what you're doing with zero interest DAO. Maybe we could kick off that conversation with, you know, a high level overview of zero interest DAO and those solutions that you're driving into the blockchain industry. A lot of people know about liquidity, uh, the liquidity protocol, which was, uh, uh, established by a Swiss company uh, back in uh, 2021, just a year ago. Um, when it started, it uh, the, the TVL, the total value lock, shot up to $2 billion, you know, in about a couple of weeks, which is amazing. And uh, so we are going to start the same uh, type of contract. In fact, it's a, it's a direct port uh, contract uh, to both Solana and Bellas. As you know, Solana and Velas, they're both uh, very fast networks and the uh, transaction fees is, uh, is, is very low. And I think that uh, will present a, a very attractive opportunity uh, for people. So that's basically the, uh, the gist of it. We are porting the liquidity protocol uh, to both Solana and Velas. Very cool. And You've probably been following, you know, the DeFi space and, and DeFi has sort of grown quite a bit. You know, it started mainly with a lot of value locked in Ethereum, but then Solana and these other ecosystems, as you mentioned, have really caught up. Um, what do you see as like the next uh, big thing that's going to continue the growth of the DeFi industry and, and how will zero interest play a role in that? Well, stable coins are uh, getting a lot of attention and they've uh, grown big. Right, the, the 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 biggest two, USDT and USDC are backed by the US dollar, and uh, of course uh, those fall under the uh, jurisdiction of the United States uh, because it's backed by the US dollar. And some people say that uh, those two stable coins present a risk to the economic system um, by being, uh, you know, prone to uh, to runs. Now, there is another class of stable coins. Uh, among them are uh, this one that we'll be building, which is backed by uh, not a stable coin, but by a cryptocurrency, a, a volatile cryptocurrency like SOL and, uh, and uh, VLX. <clears throat> so that's, yeah, I would say uh, the, the, the biggest thing that's coming along uh, together with DeFi is uh, stable coins. And uh, we also witness, of course, the growth, the, the spurt of um, uh, stable coins like UST, which exists in the Terra blockchain. And that's also sensational because now uh, they, are back, they, have, they have started to back it up with, uh, also with Bitcoin, uh, another, you know, another cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I know UST has been in the news recently uh, you know, with the market crashing, um, and it, there's always been this discussion around stable coins on, on how exactly they're backed. What is the best way to back a stable coin, whether it's just with pure U.S. dollars, whether it's with Bitcoin, or whether it's with a basket of goods, or even with other equities and, and, and other, you know, financial products as well. And you know, UST has been sort of renowned as like the more decentralized algorithmically backed stablecoin. However, when we saw in the last couple of days here, UST uh, lost its pegging to uh, the dollar 
And, you know, at one point it was 97 cents, 94 cents, but actually dropped, I think, almost over 50% in value. Um, and the, the Terra ecosystem is using the Bitcoin that they backed to try and bring that back to its stable yes. nature. So that's super interesting to see with stable coins and, you know, just sort of gives a refresher to people on how this is the Wild West and, you know, having a, a stable coin that mm -hmm. turns out not being so stable um, is very possible. You know, do you have any insight mm -hmm. onto, you know, the way that these stable coins are backed and if there's ways to prevent yes. this kind of uh, thing happening? Yeah. The liquidity protocol stands uh, between a purely fiat-backed stablecoin and a uh, uh, algorithmic stablecoin uh, like USD because it's backed by uh, a volatile uh, cryptocurrency in that you deposit your volatile cryptocurrency and in return, you get this uh, stablecoin. Now, the risk you're taking by doing that is that if the price of the uh, volatile cryptocurrency suddenly drops, then you could get liquidated. You are going to lose your uh, volatile cryptocurrency like Ethereum in the case of the liquidity protocol. But of course, the, the money you borrowed is already paid for. Uh, and so it, it's all yours, right? Um, but the, the reason, the main reason you would do this is so that you could use the value of your Ethereum in the case of liquidity protocol and at the same time, take advantage of uh, when it will uh, go up. But if it drops, then that's your risk. You could lose all your uh, Ethereum. Definitely. And now I'm more curious on uh, what zero interest DAO, maybe we can talk about uh, you know, borrowing th those interest rates and, and what exactly is zero interest and, and how it's going to move DeFi towards zero interest loans, if that's what this is about. Yeah, so another way of thinking of this is that you are issuing a stable coin backed by uh, the uh, volatile cryptocurrency, right? And uh, so the liquidity protocol has proven itself to uh, hold up the value of uh, US, uh, LUSD in their case, USDL in our case. And uh, if you look at the LUSD, it has dipped also, but only temporarily when there is a sudden drop of Ethereum. And uh, we can look at uh, the history of that. And it's very interesting because uh, for me, from my standpoint, the, the protocol, the, uh, the algorithm has already proven itself. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. And where exactly is uh, Zero Interest DAO in terms of uh, the growth and, and the release of the main platform, you know, how long have you been working on it and what's the current state right now? So we've been uh, working on both Solana and Bellas. Uh, right now we're having problems in Solana, but in Bellas um, we're uh, right ahead. So uh, Bellas is uh, also a port of Solana. And so it's got similar characteristics as uh, Solana, but it's not well known yet, uh, as well known as Solana this time. Mm -hmm. So it's very likely that uh, we will be releasing ahead uh, in uh, in Velas instead of Solana, but we will see. That sounds great. And are you planning on releasing it in the near future, or is there any tentative timeline for uh, you know this year release next year? Um, yeah, definitely this this year. Um, in fact, uh, I was uh, more aggressive uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I was saying we could release this in a couple of months. But it's not uh, looking uh, like it. I have to mention uh, also uh, in this program at Ashton that uh, uh, one of the features of our uh, zero interest project, which is uh, aside from the features of the liquidity, the original liquidity protocol itself, is that it's going to be inflation resistant. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to peg. Uh, USDL to inflation adjusted USD instead of just plain USD. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And yeah, especially with, you know, the, the hidden inflation that people are becoming so apparent of in, in with the US dollar, you know, how 
uh, it just seems to continue. And, and the, who knows if the inflation numbers that they're putting out for this year and last year are even, uh, you know, properly calculated. Um, it, it it seems that these stable coins, um, you know, although they're pegged to the U.S. dollar, um, are as stable as the U.S. dollar. And if the U.S. dollar is inflating, then really those coins are being inflated as well. And, and yes, I, I've seen uh, other stable coins look at other mechanisms to ca combat inflation, and they're calling those like buoyant stable coins or like coins that are uh, true stable and surpassing um, any inflationary numbers and bypassing that. Um, yeah, do you have any? Do you have a good example is. Yeah, a good example is FRAX, right? Uh, FRAX uh, is backed by USDC, and yet uh, actually um, it it uh, it is a um, it is a version of uh, Ethereum that is more uh, stable. Um, and uh, and now I'm sorry, I don't think it's backed by USDC. It's actually backed by Ethereum, also just like um, uh, just like the liquidity protocol. But uh, the difference is that uh, they use a, 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 uh, an algorithm that's well known in control theory uh, for stabilizing its value. So it's not really pegged to the uh, dollar in the way that the other stable coins are pegged, but it adjusts itself so that it's more stable than, um, uh, than uh, either, uh, say, Ethereum or the dollar itself. There is a very interesting uh, algorithm, uh, FRAX, F-R-A-X. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about it is that uh, it can be pegged to an inflation-adjusted value, but it will need an oracle for a measure of inflation. And you're right, uh, not too many people trust the government's uh, inflation measure, but for now, that's what we have. However, uh, there is a project going on. If uh, you've heard about it, it's uh, from Balaji Srinivasan. Uh, he has the, uh, the project that um, will have a better measure of inflation uh, for the dollar uh, in the future. And it's going to be uh, based on the blockchain. And I, I, it's, he has uh, issued like a, a challenge to engineers to come up with it. And so there are several entries in, in that uh, contest now. We'll see what they come up with. But I think... Uh, Inflation, uh, we'll have a better measure of inflation in the coming uh, maybe months. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is that a stable coin cannot have its own inflation measure because it is not as widely used as the dollar, right? You don't go to a restaurant uh, to buy your lunch with a stable coin at this point. You, 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 you go with your uh, USD, with your credit card. Yeah, you don't go to the grocery store to buy stuff uh, with your stablecoin yet. So uh, you cannot have a measure of inflation for stablecoin. And so we can only measure uh, a stablecoin with respect to a fiat currency because a fiat currency is, is used everywhere, like the U.S. dollar. But in the near future, imagine yourself being paid in uh, a stablecoin, like our stablecoin, USDL. But imagine that, let's say, the grocery store uh, will only accept a CBDC, you know, from the Fed, maybe. Uh, what will happen then? I think it's going to be uh, still very smooth. Uh, you can go to the grocery store, pay with your USDL, and it's going to be transparent that it will be converted to uh, a C the CBDC dollar, and you won't even know about it. So that's how things are going to be in the near future. I would say two to three years. It's an exciting uh, thing that will happen. But uh, yes, uh, I really believe it's coming. Very interesting. And what are the main uh, objectives that uh, the zero interest team needs to get done you know, on the push to the main net release of, of the platform? You know, what, what are the major milestones that you need to get done in, in the coming months? <laughs> So we need to get it working uh, in uh, Velas first because that's coming along uh, better than uh, Solana. And um, I believe we can accomplish that uh, by end of uh, this month. Uh, we will get the, the liquidity protocol running uh, in Velas as it is. And then we will start modifying it 
uh, June, July. Uh, so July, maybe uh, a good um, end of July, a good objective to get that done. And uh, then uh, we will try it with another uh, with another collateral. So instead of say just SOL, we want to collateralize it with state SOL. In other words, Solana is a staking, you know, proof of stake system, right? And people would want to stake their soul. But when you stake your soul, normally you cannot use it anymore for our, uh, uh, for our uh, contract. What we will do is instead of allowing just Sol to be staked, we are going to allow stake Sol, you know, from Lido. Lido is uh, another uh, contract out there. And if you deposit your Sol with Lido, it's going to find the best validator for you where you will earn the most for your Sol. And at the same time, it's going to issue this STSOL token. Mm -hmm. That's what we will accept as collateral in our smart uh, contract. Very cool. And, and what is the best way for people to follow along uh, as zero interest continues to grow? Yeah, we have a, a website right now. Um, it's uh, zeropercenter.org. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, I can uh, maybe spell that out somewhere. Yeah, I can leave the link in the description box below as well. Definitely for the viewers, Carlos. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time okay. um, to, to speak about all this. Um, really fascinating discussion on stable coins. Looking forward to seeing the USDL and the growth on, on the VLIS chain and, and the, the main release of zero interest. I appreciate uh, your insights. All the best with zero interest moving forward and let's follow up in the near future thank you very much austin glad to be here <laughs>